The second law of thermodynamics tells us that what drives spontaneity in the universe is an increase of entropy. So the entropy of the universe is the sum of the entropy of the system plus the surroundings. And for all non-reversible processes, we're going to have an increase in the entropy of the universe. Um, so the entropy change of the universe is always going to be positive. And a non-reversible process is a process that is not at equilibrium. A reversible process has to have zero change on the uh, entropy of the universe. That means in the opposite direction, it also has zero change on the entropy of the universe, so it can go both directions. Uh, this can only happen if the system is always at equilibrium. So as a system changes, it always remains at equilibrium. So if uh, we have a non-reversible process, we have a positive delta S for the universe uh, in a spontaneous direction. If we try to go in the opposite direction, that would be negative, and that is not allowed by the second law of thermodynamics. And one of the results of second law of thermodynamics is that heat is always going to flow from high temperatures to low temperatures. It's not possible for heat to naturally flow from low to high. It always flows from high to low. And um, what has been found out is that our exothermic processes are always increasing the entropy of the surroundings. So exothermic processes are putting heat into the surroundings, as we know, as we raise temperature or add heat to something, we increase the, the entropy. So exothermic processes will increase the entropy of the surrounding environments. At endothermic processes, to steal energy from the surroundings, reducing its temperature and reducing its entropy. And uh, the units of entropy are joules per Kelvin. So in the form of joules per Kelvin, that's heat per temperature, we have found out that the entropy of the surroundings is negative, the heat of the system uh, divided by temperature. So it would be a negative enthalpy of reaction divided by temperature. So we can put this into this equation, the sum of system plus surroundings is the universe. So we get uh, this, our universe is the system minus delta H over T, that's our surroundings now. So we start to rearrange it here, um, multiply the temperature across, and we have uh, our negative T delta S of the universe is equal to delta H of the system minus T delta S of the system. And we have designated this uh, negative T delta S to be a new property called uh, Gibbs free energy, which we represent with a G, delta G. So our delta G is going to be delta H minus T delta S. And for a spontaneous reaction, our delta S of the universe is going to be positive. We have a positive here, that negative makes our delta G negative. So a spontaneous reaction would be a negative delta G. And that equilibrium is going to be zero. So we're going to play with this equation more in the next um, next video. Uh, we're going to um, just look at some questions right now uh, of entropy of the surroundings. So entropy of the surroundings, looking at this equation here. And uh, the combination of surroundings plus systems, so looking at this equation up here. So we're just going to ask answer some questions. So uh, does entropy of the system always increase in spontaneous reactions? This is actually from the double-sided worksheet, and their answer is no. Uh, so the um, entropy of the universe always increases in spontaneous reactions. But the universe is some of system and surroundings, and we know that uh, the system can be positive or negative. So we can uh, melt ice into water, that's a positive delta S, or we can freeze water into ice, that's a negative delta S for the system. So we know the system can be both positive and negative, and surroundings also can be positive and negative based on whether we're dealing with an exothermic or endothermic reaction. 
So the entropy of the universe always does, not the entropy of the system. Now, system plus surroundings is equal to universe. So if system is positive entropy, surroundings is positive entropy, the universe is going to be positive. So that's always going to be a spontaneous uh, process. If entropy of the system is negative, surroundings is negative, the universe will also be negative. So that is not sp spontaneous. If the system is positive, but the universe is negative, so <coughs> that would be our system is positive, uh, a negative uh, surroundings will actually mean a positive delta H, an endothermic process. So we have positive, we have positive, I said that wrong. Yeah, yeah. Positive uh, delta S. Uh, this should be positive for our uh, endothermic process. So to get the delta G negative, we have to have a high temperature. So we can be the universe can be positive or negative, but at a high temperature will push it into the negative regime. If we have a negative delta S for the system, a positive surroundings. So the positive surroundings will mean that we have to have a negative delta H. So we have a negative and a positive. Keep saying this. Okay. System, negative and negative is what it would be. So our positive surroundings will give us a negative delta H. So we have a negative and negative. So to make this dominate, we have to have a small temperature. So uh, we'll have, um, Spontaneous at low temperatures. So otherwise it can be positive and negative for the sum, but at no temperatures, low temperatures, it'll be negative delta G, our spontaneous process. So let's look at a couple more problems. These are derived from uh, both the worksheet and from uh, the homework. So we're asking what is the um, entropy effect from the surroundings and uh, so our equation again is our change of sur entropy of surroundings so we know this based on our enthalpy our heat of reaction so even though we have chemical processes here and um, some of them might have gases. We're not looking at the gas for the surroundings. We'd be looking at the gas for the system, but the surroundings, we're looking for the heat of the reaction. So for a delta S going to a delta, uh, for a solid ice, um, going to a liquid, so we're melting ice into water. We know that is an endothermic process. Melting ice absorbs heat. So that means we have a positive delta H. Positive delta H will end up giving us a negative surroundings. The next one, a gas going to a liquid, condensation. So steam, when it condenses, if you stick your hand in steam, it's very hot. That's not just the heat of the um, steam, 100 degrees Celsius. That's also the steam condensing into liquid on your hand, which dumps a lot of heat into our skin. So in this case, condensation is an exothermic process. So that'd be a negative value for delta H. That negative switches over to a positive value for our entropy of surroundings. Uh, solid carbon dioxide going to gases, carbon dioxide. This is dry ice that sublimates directly to a gas. And again, we know that our dry ice absorbs heat. It pulls in heat, makes things cold. So it's an endothermic process. So it's a positive delta H. Positive delta H will give us negative delta S surroundings. Okay, down here we just have our enthalpy values. So we're just basically looking at our signs. So if we have a negative delta H, an exothermic process, the two negatives will cancel, giving us the positive entropy of surroundings. 
if we have a positive uh, delta H, that's an endothermic process, it's absorbing heat, our positive does not cancel at negative, so we end up with a negative um, entropy of surroundings. And if we have a zero, we're neither exothermic nor endothermic. A zero, the negative won't change it, it will still remain zero. So we will have a zero effect on our surroundings.